we have gathered together today to say words of eulogy, a hesped for our beloved Shmuel Gutnik, who was beloved to so many here in Cleveland, in Israel, and really around the world where the family has made such an impression. It's customary to begin with some psalms from the book of Psalms, Tehillim, to say the first chapter of Tehillim, and Ella has come forward to help with some translation as we say the prayer. I'll say in English, and Ella will translate into Russian. Happy is the one who has not followed the counsel of the wicked, nor stood in the path of sinners, nor sat in the company of the scornful. Rather, that one's delight is in the Torah of the Lord, meditating in, in God's Torah day and night. And such will be like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season, whose leaf will not wither and whatever that one does prospers. Not so the wicked, who are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked shall not survive judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord loves the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Мы собрались здесь для того, чтобы проводить в последний путь гутника Семена, которого все так, все так любили и уважали. И я попробую в нескольких словах перевести то, что он сказал из Торы. Тот счастлив кто, тот, кто не стоит на пути ведущего и, и не стоит на пути грешника. Скорее свет Торы и Господа Бога, я не знаю, как правильно сказать, переходит на тех, кто спускает этот свет. Никто не должен пережить последний день, judgment, последний день, и не грешник Thank you. Thank you very much. And such is the is the way of a great human being who is assembles with the righteous and serves the Almighty. And such was Shmuel. Those of us who knew him had the good fortune to know him just to look at his beautiful smile and his love of, of his people, of his family, of Yiddishkeit, found enthusiasm. It's customary to say a song of Davra Melech, a prayer of David. You know, our beloved Shmuel is named after the prophet Samuel. And of course that name must be in the family for thousands of years. And Samuel was the prophet that anointed David, our king, David HaMelech. And this is a prayer of David that we recite in Hebrew. Mizmar le David Adonai Rai Ya 
en gereve maak leidsedek. Oei, le man shimo kam ki eilech begeit al moves. Lo hiraro ki ato himodi shev techa oh mejan techa hey mo ye nachmoni taharoich levan hayshulchan. A song of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. God causes me to lie down in lush pastures. God leads me beside tranquil waters. God restores my soul and guides me in righteous paths for God's name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your scepter and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in full view of my adversaries. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. May only goodness and kindness pursue me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for length of days. And so David HaMelech writes, You have anointed my head with oil. And if we search the scripture, we find it was Shmuel, Shmuel Hanavi, of blessed memory, who anointed David with oil. Our beloved Shmuel was a very, very great man. He was really the patriarch of his family since his older brother Yefim passed away a short while ago. And he, he was close with, with many, many people, each of you, so very special in a different way. I want to acknowledge the presence I see of Rabbi Newman is here, and, and uh, Rabbi Levitensky and other rabbis in the community acknowledge your presence. Shmuel had a very challenging life, hard for an American boy like me to imagine. His father, Yosef, was taken away during the Stalin purges when he was yet a child. His mother, Chaya, the family name was Slutsky. She was left with her siblings to help her through an overwhelmingly difficult time. She had a beloved sister, Feige, Fanya. I believe there was a brother, Moshe, and Aaron. And Fanya helped Chaya through that unimaginable time when her husband was taken away. And the family feels to mention Fanya especially because she was such a close sister to Chaya, Shmuel's mother. She was like a second mother to Shmuel. Fanya had lost her fiancé. The man she was to marry was killed in the war in World War II, and she never could rededicate herself to another man, but rather she chose to dedicate her life to the family. When she worked, she worked to help the family. And it was in that devotion that Fanya really helped save the family, as we will hear shortly. She worked to support the family when Shmuel was a little boy in Siberia at age five. I believe they lived in Baranka. Was it Baranka? Before they were in Siberia, they were in Alevsk. 
but Fania saved them and warned them and got them to Siberia in time. Shmuel's father Yosef died in 1938. He disappeared in the middle of the night. Chaya and her sister Fania heard that the men that had been taken away, that Stalin had rounded up, they were going to be in a certain plaza where they could be seen by a, by a, rail race, a railroad station. And that really was the last time that Chaya saw her husband Yosef she came to the station, but they weren't allowed near all the prisoners that were rounded up. Chaya could never tell her own children about it. She couldn't relay the story. It was so painful. But her sister Fania relayed this to the children, grandchildren. It was a hot summer day, and they were rounded up by the railway station with many, many, many people there all being taken away as prisoners. They were not even allowing them to have water. And that was the last time that Chaya saw Shmuel's father, Yosef. And later on, the family received a letter that he had died, which was unfortunately very common in Stalin's government. Fanya moved to Kiev. She moved to Kiev for a job to support the family. And when the trouble started of World War II. The people in Kiev relocated to Siberia, and Fanya told her family that was in Alevsk to come to Siberia, where she had some position. Shmuel's grandfather, Moshe Aaron, died in Siberia during the years that they were there. In Siberia, Shmuel was five years old. He remembered Siberia well. And though the family struggled in Siberia, there was a shortage of food. But for Shmuel, he never realized there was a shortage because he was the youngest in the family and they used to give him as much food as they could. They showered him with food. After the war ended, the family went back to Alevsk. But they found that their very own home, the home that they had built, their great-grandfather had built this home in Alevsk was now taken away from them and they were fortunate to get just a few rooms in that home. But Shmuel didn't give up. He persevered. He was a, a man of great strength, even a young man. He was very mechanically gifted. He was very good with his hands. And throughout school, the eight grades of elementary school, he appreciated working with his hands. He continued on in trade school and became a mechanic for steel machinery. Eventually, Shmuel was drafted into the army, and he moved to Kiev at age 22. It is in Kiev that he met and married his wife, Valentina, when he was 24 years old. They were blessed with a daughter, Ira, after, uh, named after her grandfather Yosef because they spell Yosef with an I and Iras with an I and then five years later Rita was born blessed with a second daughter once again tragedy struck Valentina Shmuel's wife took ill in 1974 she developed cancer and she passed away in 1976 at age 45. They were very difficult years. Shmuel was a young man. He was 40 years old when his wife passed away. And yet he never could remarry. Ira was only 15 and Rita was but 10 years old at the time. It was difficult for them. Their mother struggled through a very challenging illness an overwhelming illness that took years of toll on her. And at that difficult time, the family wants to mention, once again, Shmuel's mother, Chaya, and his aunt, Fania. At that most difficult time, when Valentina was sick, Chaya and Fania enveloped the girls with love. They devoted their lives just to encouraging the girls, to encouraging them, helping them to get through this most difficult time both for Ira 
and Rita, and of course Shmuel. Shmuel devoted his life to the children, to the family. He was always a hard worker. He himself, he needed nothing. He did everything for the Mishpucha. At Gevolt as the Kindle Zolzan Gizint Zel Hoban Alts. He wanted the children to have everything. When the Gans Eleven for them, Zan Gans Eleven again, the whole life was that the children should be able to be well and to thrive. But Er Alein not Nish Gedav Hoban Kain Zach Nish. Chayot Gezokt, his mother said about him that she told the girls, Your dad is always for you. Everything he's doing is for you. Al-Sifar, al dear. Ira says, how did they get through such difficult times? They can't mention Durgain as a shveri yorin. How can they go through such difficult times? So Ira explained, Zab lib gahat, zab lib gahat from the mishpocha, zab lib gahat from chaya, from fanya, from shmiel. And thus had they gahalt, and that's how they got through that difficult tragedy, those difficult years. And that's really what matters in life. It's what they're saying. It's what Ira told me yesterday. What matters in life, the, 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 the physical things, the materialistic things are secondary, very secondary. A mensch lebt for a poor yorin and a nachdam a mensch geht weg. We live a little bit time on this world, but what is the essence of life? The essence of life is to emulate our Creator. And how do we emulate our Creator? When the God gave God kept life, God kept alles. The Almighty gives everything. And that, in that way, this family, that's how they got through all these difficulties. That's what matters in life, the love and the support. His older brother, Yefim, who was a dear friend of mine, many of you, I'm sure, knew him well. Yefim had married Maya, and Marina was born. But then they left Kiev in 1979. And at that point, Shmuel really, he took charge of Chaya, his mother, Fanya, and Aaron. He was there for them. He wanted to follow in his older brother's footsteps. Ifim always cared for his loved ones. And Shmuel wanted to do the same. And so Shmuel dedicated his life to taking care of Chaya and Fanya and Aaron at that time. Rita married in 1983, and, da and Donna was born in 1988, her daughter Donna, that's uh, Shmuel's Einikel. Ira was married in, in 1985 and was blessed with a, a daughter, Valerie, but they were both married in Kiev. And the family desperately wanted to leave. They wanted to leave Russia. There was so much anti-Semitism, so much hatred, But Shmuel would not abandon his mother. He wouldn't leave Chaya, he wouldn't leave Fanya. So he had a plan. The authorities in Russia would permit a family to leave if they're connecting with family that already left. So if you have a brother that left, then you can get papers. They started to become stricter about who they allowed to leave. And they said, we'll give you permission to go if you want to reconnect with family. So Shmuel said, in America, so I'm going to apply for papers and to go be with my brother. And we'll all say we want to reconnect with the family. And they'll issue the permission, and I'll drop out the last minute because I'm really not going to leave my mother, Chaya, or my aunt, Fanya. I'm not going to leave them. I'll drop out, but by then you'll have the permission. The family will go. And I'll stay here. That was his plan. He wanted to care for his mother and his aunt. And so the sisters all began gathering documents. One day, Chaya called a family member together. Ira, was it? Did Chaya call you to speak to you? It was Ira. Chaya was 84 years old. And, and she was a woman already of... 84 years, as I say, she had had two strokes by then. And she said, I know that the best thing for the family is to leave here. And of course, 
for me, an older woman, it would be very hard to leave, but the family must go. And Ira was crying as, as she told me this over. The family must go, and despite my ill health, and despite my sister's also, was 74, I think, her sister, Fanya, we're going to go with you to America. This was the sacrifice of Chaya and Fanya because they wanted Shmuel and the family to leave. It took two years for them to get documents, during which time Rita and her husband left to Eretz Yisrael a year earlier, which is a great blessing for Shmuel. Shmuel has family in, as we say, the Holy Land. And it's a great merit for all the Jewish people. Meanwhile, finally the family came to America, at which time Shmuel continued to work very, very hard. There are quite a few people here today from the local community who knew Shmuel from his hard work in the shul, from his caring about in the shul, in the mikveh, in the institutions that he helped on Taylor Road and other places. He would always light up and he would tell me about his dear friend Shia Newman for 24 years, how he loves Shia Newman so much and the Newman family. I'm also indebted to the Newman family. When I got engaged, that's the first place I stayed. When I got engaged, I came from New York, I stayed by Shia's parents on Summerfield. But the point is, Shmuel had a really a deep love for the Yiddishkeit and the people, and he was honored and privileged to work there, and they felt the same way about him. He had many, many friends. He celebrated weddings. He would go to the f funerals of people from the shuls, from the neighborhoods. And he was really bound up together with the community and much, much loved. I want to share at this time a story that Ira shared with me. I said, you know, I was born in America and I grew up here. My grandparents came from Ruslan, from Russia, but I was born here. But when you think about what Ira and Rita and their family went through, what they went through to have a yuntif, what they went through to have a, a, an attachment with God. So she shared a story with me. One day, her grandmother Chaya said, Simchas Torah is coming, the holiday of Simchas Torah. Once a year, when we dance with the Torah, Simchas Torah is coming, we must go to shul. Of again in shul, it's a crime. It's a crime to go to shul in Russia. But this was the plan. Some Jews in the community, they had a little house, a kleina hose in the padol, in some uh, suburb that they were planning to go and gather for Simchas Torah. And so Ira went with her, her grandmother, Chaya. They went to go to this little house. And she remembers how her grandmother went inside the little house where all the people were gathering to celebrate God's Torah. And when she went up the steps to go in, a big, tall, strong, wide man, a hooligan from the KGB, KGB, stood in front of her, said, where are you going? Abu Geistu. I want to go into the to the synagogue. Simchas Torah. Hot the gezokt. Simishdok on shiul do. The KGB man said, "There's no synagogue here. Nothing's going on in there. You go back." And she was not permitted to see the other Jews dancing with the Torah. It really is frightening how those wicked communists understood that as long as our children have the Torah, we will persevere and we will continue to thrive and bring blessing to the world. And they understood that their effort needed to be to try to stop our children from attaching with the Torah. 
But such was the devotion. And I tell you t today, the Gutnik family, that to go to a shul was a danger because you never knew what might happen. There's many stories how people suffer terribly by practicing religion. But to Chaya, to the Slutsky family, to the Gutnik family, that was the main thing. The children should always remember who they were. She remembers her grandmother's hamantashen on Purim and how special they were. She remembers Pesach. They were only allowed two kilograms of matzah for eight days. When she came here, she placed her daughter in the Hebrew Academy for a number of years, Valerie. We spoke about the understanding in Judaism that life is temporary, but the eternal life, the next world is eternal. And that's why the Jewish people we call a cemetery a Beis Chaim. Because the truth is, we live by our accomplishments, we live by who we were in this world. And at this time, it's an opportunity for each and every one of us to connect ourselves with this great man, Shmuel, who was able to give over to his family the love of Yiddishkeit and the love of family and unity and has merited today to have children, grandchildren in Israel, in America, that understand what's meant to Zainayid. The Almighty should bless the family together that they should continue in the ways of their special, special parents and grandparents and the children should follow the sacred ways and always keep close in their heart the love and devotion of their family. Shmuel was born on, two, on uh, Monday, July 15th, 1935. So I went to the newspaper. I wanted to see what was the news that happened on the day he was born. I like to do that. When God is getting ready to send a soul into the world, I like to read what was going on the day it came in the world. I remember his brother was born. Marina had just visited Svas. And we found the day his brother, brother was born, Yefim, there had been a pogrom in Svas. It was fascinating. Marina had just come back from Tzfas before her father passed away. Well, this really amazed me. The day that Shmuel was born, the headline is, war is definite. War for sure. There's definitely going to be a war. This is 1935. They said Italy is holding out and the British are arming. And in the sub-headline, Berlin riot, mob sings, as it beats up Jews. That's what was going on the day our beloved Shmuel was born. That's what the world was like. And here came this man into all of this darkness and confusion and evil, and he was able to carry the candle of light, the or, the or Yosef. He was able to carry the light of his father Yosef and all of Judaism and pass it on to the next generation, to his children. I want to make sure we mention all the, the grandchildren. We said uh, Valerie and um, your daughter, we said Donna, right? And also Or Yosef. I met Or Yosef, right? You should have a lot of nachas from all the children. They should live up to the great mandate that they have to live up to a Zeta like this. At this time, I would ask if anyone from the family would like to say a few words. We would be honored. Я не понимаю, 
и не осознаю, что это случилось, потому что еще две недели назад мы уезжали, и я знала, что я приду в сентябре проведать папу, и что мы сейчас не будем гулять, и что он еще видит фотографии моего сына, его внука в военной форме, который должен и, идти в армию в июле месяце. Okay, I will try to translate. So my sister cannot believe it. Two, two weeks ago she came to visit us and she didn't know the bad circumstance would come up so fast. She couldn't believe it. My dad is not, not with us. And she was believing like dad was so proud of his grandson or and he will see his picture wearing the uniform when he's supposed to go to the Israeli army and our boy is very proud to be part of it. Very proud to be Israeli citizen. Папа был счастлив, что он увидел мою дочь, что она вышла замуж, и он был у нас еще два года назад. И мы просто имели счастье, что наша семья, наша маленькая семья была вместе в таком радостном событии. И это для папы было большим счастьем и радостью, потому что человек с такой любовью к жизни, с такой любовью не знаю, он, он так любил людей, он просто радовался каждый момент своей жизни, при том, что он прожил тяжелейшую жизнь, но он был всегда жил с семьей, он жил нами, мы были на него на первом, на втором и на двадцатом месте. Мы знали всегда, что бы ни случилось, у нас есть папа, который всегда подставит нам руки, и мы знаем, что у нас есть всегда спина. Папа был для нас мамой и папой всю жизнь, и семья была всегда сплоченной бабушкой, нашей бабушкой Хай и бабушкой Фанни, и нас было мало, но мы, мы знали, что мы сильные. Когда не так давно умер мой дядя Фима, и папа мне позвонил, сообщил, сказал, что Риточка, я остался один. Я говорю, пап, как же один? А он говорит, поколение мое, я один из, из взрослых, я один из, из, из стариков. И я поняла, что для него это было тяжелым ударом, который так первый он же почувствовал, что это что ему очень тяжело. Но Well, they have, we have a happy time in our life. Two years ago, when my niece Donna got married, we were able to go together, all of us, and celebrate this biggest day in our life, the biggest happy day in our life. And my dad was so proud to be part of it. He didn't feel good that time, but he was pushing me. He was, he was telling, I said, Dad, we cannot go. You don't feel good. Maybe another time. Maybe they will come to visit. And he said, no, 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 don't tell me this. I am going. I'm going to be there and we'll celebrate. So it happened. It was the most happiest time in our life. And our dad has a huge heart. And this heart was open for people. He loved people. He loved life. He loved music. He loved to be together, be united with everybody. He always He lives for us. For him, he put his hands under us. So we feel like we were supporting, we are he, we're there, and he's not gonna leave us. He's gonna be with us forever. So that's why my sister couldn't believe it. This time is here happened, and we, and the sadness time. But we're still together, and people sitting here, and I'm glad he had so many friends who, doesn't matter, feel sick, happy, unhappy. They're here with us, and they'll help us for this hard time in our life. Папча, дорогой, я хочу просто сказать, что мы счастливы тем, что... Папочка, дорогой мой, я хочу сказать, что мы счастливы тем, какой ты у нас был, есть и всегда останешься дорогим, любимым, всегда волнующимся за нас, но всегда веселым, и всегда ты говорил нам, все будет хорошо. На любой вопрос, папа, как ты, все будет хорошо, что у вас? Это так отвечался по телефону. Я когда летела вчера э, сюда, в, э, в Америку, к 
сожалению, я могла только одна прилететь из моей семьи, но мой муж, мои дети, вся большая семья моего мужа, они все здесь со мной. И сколько телефонов я получила за эти два часа, что я ехала в аэропорт от людей, которые папу знали лично и которые не знали, а знали его только по моим рассказам. Я получила такие теплые слова. И столько, папа, они тебе сказали, и с такой любовью, что они все здесь со мной. Это целый огромный самолет, который прилетел со мной сюда. Папча, я хочу, чтобы ты продолжай оберегать нас оттуда сверху. Мы будем жить так, как ты хотел, веселиться и радоваться, потому что сегодня мы вспоминали о тебе, и мы просто вспоминали все смешные, веселые истории, что даже нельзя вспомнить тебя грустным. И я хочу сказать, что мы будем жить и стараться, и продолжать твою жизнь, чтобы нас видел сверху и радовался за нас, и чтобы ты видел, что у нас будут успехи, которые ты нам желал, чтобы наши дети были здоровы, чтобы у нас появились внуки, твои правнуки, и чтобы ты оберегал нас. И Абалати Шмора Лейну, Мишамайм, Бататия Малах Шелану, просто ты наш ангел. just want to say we feel so loved and so support and my sister came by herself from Israel her she could, her family could not come with her for certain but so many best wishes so many blessing for those two hours she was getting to airport and waiting for her flight was sent in from the people who doesn't who didn't even know my dad but they heard from our stories they told they heard from my sister's stories And she said, we know, Daddy, you're still here. Maybe physically you're not here, but emotionally you're here, you're with us, and life is continuing, and you're going to help us through this difficult time to uh, so, I'm sorry. moving words it's customary we ask forgiveness from our beloved Shmuel surely I didn't honor you enough at Menorah Park and we ask Mechila we ask we say you should be a Melitz Yosher you should be an advocate on behalf of your family and the people of Israel we will be heading to Zion Memorial. That's where the Kavura will be in Zion Memorial. And at this time, we would ask the carriers of the Aron. You know, our beloved is held in a Aron, not a coffin, but like an Aron, like where we keep our Torah in an Aron. We would ask those who are going to carry the Aron to come forward. <laughs> 